Now, when there is a blunt mechanical trauma to the eye, the anterior face of the ciliary body will rupture. Okay. Now, when the ciliary body ruptures, there is a separation between the longitudinal and the circular fibers of the ciliary body. And that you can see on this image and on gonioscopy as well. We have learnt about gonioscopy in our glaucoma classes. Okay, there is a widening of the ciliary body band because of the separation between the longitudinal and the circular fibers. This leads to an angle recession and when the angle recession is greater than 180 degrees, it will result the patient to land up in angle recession glaucoma. Okay, this is clear because of the separation between the longitudinal and circular fibers of the ciliary body. This angle recession greater than 180 degrees resulting in angle recession glaucoma. Now let's look at what happens to the pupil. This is a very uh, commonly asked question. The vosius ring, it's nothing but the imprint of the pupil on the anterior capsule of the lens. Okay, when the eye is hit, the pupil goes and touches the anterior capsule of the lens which is present behind it and an imprint of the pupil is left on the anterior capsule. Now, the, what you have to understand here is the diameter is slightly smaller than that of the pupil because there is a constriction of the pupil when it is under a traumatic condition because of the constriction. See the original size of the pupil is all over here but the ring is much smaller because the pupil constricts due to trauma. Now sphincteric tears cause traumatic mydriasis and the patient presents with glare. This is an irreversible change. All you can do is ask the patient to wear glasses in order to reduce the glare. Now, iridodialysis is also very frequently asked. We know that dialysis means separation from the root. Any structure which is separated from the root, we term it as dialysis. When I say iridodialysis, it means the iris is separated from its root. See, all over here it is separated, right? And the pupil, you see it's in the form of D. So, D-shaped pupil. Where do you see D-shaped pupil? In iridodialysis. That will be your answer. Now, what happens when the ciliary body is injured posterior to the iris? It results in this dangerous condition called sympathetic ophthalmitis. So, you can understand just as there is a dangerous area on the face, the dangerous area of the eye is the ciliary body because it lands up in sympathetic ophthalmitis. Okay? And Delenfuc nodules are the pathognomonic nodules of sympathetic ophthalmitis. We all know that. Right? These nodules are seen. These are nothing but lymphocytic infiltrations of the choroid. Right? Delenfuc nodules are lymphocytic infiltrations. Okay? Kindly memorize that. Now that we have spoken about choroid, let's see choroid rupture. It is very common and the rupture involves three layers. The retinal pigment epithelium, the choroid and the Brooks membrane. All of these three are ruptured together termed as choroidal rupture. Okay. There is a crescent or curvilinear yellowish white rupture concentric to the optic disc margin. Okay. That is what you can see in this picture. Right. The crescent or curvilinear yellowish white rupture concentric to the optic disc margin. That is how you will see a choroidal rupture. Let's look at what happens to our favorite part that is the lens. Now the lens can subluxate or dislocate. By subluxation I mean partial displacement. Dislocation means complete dislocation from its uh, natural position. So a subluxated lens is more common in blunt trauma. So the partial displacement of the lens can occur either anteriorly or it can go posteriorly into the vitreous. Okay, it's understandable. Now another thing is we have already learnt about it, the rosette cataract, right? Petal like in structure as you can see in this image, usually there are 10 petals in number and it's present in the posterior part of the lens. Now another condition is the vitreous hemorrhage, the patient presents with a sudden loss of vision. Most commonly seen in young males because they are more susceptible to such kind of trauma. So young males most commonly seen and most common overall cause however 
not just trauma the overall cause if you are asked what is the most common cause of fitness hemorrhage your answer will be diabetic retinopathy okay and the hallmark uh, or pathognomonic feature of vitreous hemorrhage is vitreous base avulsion or famously known as the bucket handle tear okay you can see it in this image there's a bucket handle tear this is the diagnostic feature of vitreous hemorrhage now this question is frequently asked the attachments of vitreous which is is a gel like body we know right it is a gel body now it has to be attached to something so that it can stay within its uh, place in the posterior segment so where is it attached it is attached to the macula the optic disc margin the blood vessels of the retina and the vitreous base and this is another question the strongest attachment of the vitreous is at the vitreous base okay vitreous base is the strongest attachment now as we have seen iridodialysis let's look at retinal dialysis okay this is the single most common retinal finding in ocular trauma okay what happens to retina most commonly retinal dialysis that is it is detached and the most common site is the inferotemporal then supranasal part of retina okay inferotemporal succeeded by the supranasal most common is inferotemporal side of retina and it can obviously lead to a complete detachment that is retinal detachment first there is a dialysis and it can progress to retinal detachment uh, another retinal finding which is frequently asked is the berlin's edema okay look at this image this creamy white patch all around the macula that you seeing it is due to intracellular edema and this is termed as berlin's edema and here you can see cherry red spot we have seen cherry trees don't grow tall in sand in our crao class all the causes resulting in cherry red spot so one of that is berlin's edema or mechanical trauma trauma causing cherry red spot you will have to remember all the causes we will not go into that now so it's a post traumatic macular edema it is also known as commotio retinae okay commotio retinae and the treatment is by systemic steroids okay now what happens to the posterior most part that's the optic nerve before we understand the trauma let's have a quick revision about the anatomy we know that the optic nerve is divided into four types intraocular intraorbital intracanalicular and intracranial right we know that this is the intraocular part this is the intraorbital part the intracanalicular part and last one is your intracranial part optic nerve these are the parts now your question will be which part of all of these four is most commonly injured which part of optic nerve is most commonly damaged in traumatic optic neuropathy so your answer will be intracanalicular intracanalicular most commonly injured occurs after bike accidents okay injury occurs to lateral one third and medial two third of the eyebrow we have also seen this in our orbit anatomy classes right when the it's a, it's in a type of indirect trauma it's see this if this is your eyebrow okay between the lateral one third and medial two third somewhere the, here the patient has a trauma and this results in trauma directly to the optic nerve the intracanalicular part so your answer for this question is intracanalicular now optic nerve avulsion is the most devastating condition because there is immediate blindness the optic nerve gets separated from the sclera and retracts back into the dura it's like it's like a thread separating away from a ball completely separates from the sclera and retracts into its position in the dura and the patient becomes absolutely blind after this so these are all the findings in mechanical trauma to the eyeball Hello everyone this is Dr Sai Suguna your mentor for ophthalmology at Medicoab now thanks for watching the video now we have put such videos all together in our ophthalmology app the trial version you can download from the link over here or in the description box below